Today I'm going to be installing ePrints on a fresh Ubuntu virtual machine. Um, I downloaded the latest version of Ubuntu, which I think is 15.04. Uh, um, I have this installed. I've updated the software packages. I've installed Vim uh, so I can edit on the command line in my preferred text editor. I've restarted. I've opened a web browser and a terminal, and that's all I've done. Ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to do is visit the ePrints wiki and on the, the, the left hand side we're going to go to installing ePrints and for Ubuntu we have this handy package install and I'm going to take the addresses of the stable builds copy that the stable build uh, Debian repository and I'm going to Um, update my sources.list as it describes here. So let's go to the bottom of this line, insert, and then as it says over here, Once we've done that, we're going to do update, up, get update and apt-get install. So I'm using sudo to be able to do this as root. This is downloading package metadata. Unfortunately, there's going to be quite a lot of waiting for the internet to give us things in this video today. And then we need to just do add git install eprints. Whoops. sudo add git install. I think it's pronounced sudo add git install eprints. And it's going to complain that it's not verified. Um, I'll just go ahead and install it. So this will install ePrints and all of its dependencies. And this is, uh, we have four minutes left, so I'm going to skip ahead to when it's installed. Right, we join the process with just a few seconds left for it downloading the packages. Um, and it should have all the stuff. Now we need to choose a root password, so I'm going to set that. This is the, it's installing MySQL, as MySQL is one of the dependencies, and it's asking for a root password. So you should set it to something secure. I'm gonna set mine to something completely insecure because this is just a virtual machine. So I'm going to set it to that. And it now unpacks all the things it's downloaded and installs them, which takes you know, a few minutes, but not as long as it took downloading them on my home internet. So nothing to worry about, it's burning through these and uh, it's almost done. The while we while while we let that work on that, um, the ePrints wiki moves on. After installing this, we're going to have to set up a repository before we integrate it properly with Apache and get Apache running. Um, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to have to use this machine as a web server, um, and it doesn't actually have a host name. So we're going to fake that by editing our hosts file. The, the host file will uh, allow you to do kind of local local DNS so that you can have an address at this uh, at this um, uh, have a have a URL pointing to your local machine and we're gonna we're gonna call this test .eprints .org. let's Let's call it um, uh, 
install dash test .org. And let's see how the installation is getting on. This tab, ah, so it's finished installation and it gives us this uh, handy message. Uh, welcome to ePrints with uh, some information there and a little bit of advice about how to uh, how to keep going. So um, I've done this before. What we have to do before we turn Apache on, we need to create a repository, otherwise ePrints won't work. So to do that, we have to be the ePrints user. Where are we? We, we need to be in the... Um, so we are in the user share ePrints3 directory, which is the ePrints root directory. And we're going to have to create a repository. Archive ID, test install. And we will configure the vital settings. Host name will be, ooh, what did I set it to? Set it to install test.eprints.org. Let's copy that, save me typing. Most of these stuff you can just use the default and that's fine. We're not going to be setting up an SSL certificate so we don't need an HTTPS host name. Um, for this I'm going to put my email address. Uh, archive name, test install. So then it will configure the database for you. Database user, uh, database engine, yep. Uh, write these database settings, create the database, yes. Ooh. Enter the root password, it will go ahead and create the tables. Let's create an initial user, let's call it Adam. And this will be an administrator. Whenever you see anything in square brackets like this, that means that if you just hit enter, that's what the setting will be. I'll enter a password, email, and yes, let's generate the static web pages. Let's import the library Congress subjects. And once this is done, um, so now we need to stop and start the web server. So let's go back. We're now as Adam again, and let's um, sudo uh, I think it's a to insert eprints. So eprints is now enabled. A to Apache to control restart. Different flavors of Linux have different ways of restarting Apache. Um, this is kind of the way I always do it in sudo. Uh, this is the way I do it in, in um, Ubuntu with the Apache to control. So we've restarted. So now if we go to, um, let's open a new tab. And go to our repository, which is at install-test.eprints.org. And here we have um, the virtual machine serving it at its local address and the install-test.eprints.org being served into a browser here as well. And we can confirm that it, that it, is, that it is this. If we uh, stop Apache, And refresh this it's gone and so let's start Apache again and there we have it so let's log in
Oops. Ah, it was Adam, wasn't it? So we're now logged in. Let's create a new item. You can see this is all working. So now that we have ePrint installed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import some test data so that we can just verify that all of the different bits are working, things like the browse views, the, um, the static pages, things like that. So uh, we're logged in as the ePrints user on the command line uh, in the ePrints home. And if we have a look, there's this test data directory in the ePrints root. So we're going to run a script that will import 100 records, um, and then we can do things like generate browse views. Uh, so we do that, test data, bin import test data is the name of the script. We give it the ID of the repository, which is test install. And then we're going to put minus minus for both at the end. So it will, it will give us uh, um, uh, some, some visual progress on what it's doing. If we don't do minus minus for both, then it will just wait a few seconds and then it will be done. Um, so we got some output here. And now if I go back to my manage deposit screen and refresh this, I can see that I now have uh, 100 records and they're all live. Now, as an administrator, if I now go and regenerate the views, I can now browse and we'll see what we can see. So we have these test records here, um, 100 test records with these animal titles. Um, I've been working with these for a while. It's always very comforting to see these now. Um, and we'll just check that an exporter works. So this all seems to be working very nicely. Let's have a look at a, uh, an abstract page. Check that we can download a paper from the repository. Here we go, the demonstration article PDF. That seems to be working too. So everything's installed and running. And the final thing we have to do is set up the cron tab of the repository. So there are two things that we need to do in the cron tab. We need to send out email alerts and we need to release uh, abstracts. We need to uh, make items public once their abstract period has expired. Um, so these are jobs that run in the background, usually nightly, that, that, that get done. And there's a link to a page about this underneath the setting up a repository section of the installing ePrints 3 via apt, the, the, this page we've been using. Um, and this, this setting up your cron tab here uh, links to automating your maintenance. Now this page is a little out of date and needs an update. The generate scripts no longer need to be run. They, they will generate automatically after they're about a day old. Um, the alerts and the embargo document scripts do. So to, <coughs> to implement this, we need to go back to the command line. And the command we need is crontab minus e. So this will edit the crontab, which is the file that controls um, that controls these tasks. So we will copy in the text from these two boxes. and tidy it up. Now, what this is, the, the, these are talking about the hour, the, sorry, the minute, the hour, the day, the month, the day of the week, and what command to run. So this is going to be at 15 minutes past midnight every day. This will be at 30 minutes past midnight every day. So, these scripts, the send alert script and the lift embargo script, are um, are the the two scripts we'll be calling. So we need to replace repository name with the name of our repository.
which is test install. Uh, was it install test? It was install test, wasn't it? So that's replaced it globally. And then we need to also replace the ePrints root with the root of ePrints. And we can check that as ePrints, we're in slash user slash share slash ePrints3. Note the escaping of the slashes when you do this in Vim. And that should work. So what we'll do is we'll do contab minus L to list it and we'll just copy out one of the lines just to confirm that it works. And usually with ePrints, if you add minus minus for both to command, it will show you a bit uh, what have I done wrong? So you can check the names of the uh, the IDs of the archive by having a look. It is test install, not install test. So let's change that around. So I always, whenever I put a new line in the cron tab, I always paste it onto the command line just to check that I got it right because this will just run automatically overnight and I won't be there to correct it. So this has done something, it's it's tried to lift the embargoes and that's all worked. Let's test this script as well. There were no embargoes to lift. Oh, let's run it with minus minus verbose. This is the kind of the Unix thing that, that if nothing goes wrong, it won't tell you anything. But I always like to see a little bit of output just to confirm that it's done. So it's connected there. There's nothing to do, so it hasn't done anything. Um, so that's our Quantab setup. Um, that's the last thing we need to do. We now have the, the repository installed, tested, uh, the periodic maintenance tasks running, um, and um, that's done.